Welcome back. Some courts across the country have been busy with the determination of cases. Let's now bring you a recap of some of the top legal stories we tracked. We begin with the report that the Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal filed by the People's Democratic Party and its presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar challenging the victory of President Muhammadu Buhari in the presidential election of February 23, 2019. A seven-man panel led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanku Muhammad, dismissed Atiku's appeal for lacking in merit. Speaking on behalf of the panel, Justice Muhammad stated that members of the panel had read all the documents and exhibits filed in the case for about a fortnight, within which the panel discovered the appeal was lacking in merit. The CJN noted that the reason for the Apex Court's decision would be made known on a later date, which would be communicated to all concerned. Apart from the CGN, other members of the panel are Body Road Viver, Olukayade Ariwola, John Okoro, Aminu Sanusi, Ejembi Eko, and Uwani Abaji. <laughs> In Lagos, a prosecution witness, Mr. Shehu Shuaibu, has told the Federal High Court that the sum of 800 million naira was paid from the Ministry of External Affairs into the account of a company, Joint Trust Dimensions Limited. The witness, an investigator with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, gave the testimony at the resumed trial of a former Minister of Aviation, Mr. Femi Fani Coyote, and others facing a 4.6 billion naira money laundering charge. Also charged are a former Minister of State for Finance, Nenadi Usman, and a former Chairman of the Association of Local Government of Nigeria, Argon, Yusuf Danjuma. Joint Trust Dimensions Limited is the fourth defendant. The EFCC preferred a 17-count charge of money laundering against a defendant, but all pleaded not guilty to the charges and were granted bail. Through the witnesses, the EFCC has tendered in evidence two documents, including the statement of account of Joint Trust Dimensions Limited, which the court has admitted in exhibit as evidence. State in Lagos, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, has described the recent arrest of an alleged internet fraudster, Ismaila Mustafa, also known as Mumfa, and his Lebanese accomplice, Hamza Kudai, as a landmark achievement in the sustained fight against internet-related fraud and money laundering in the country. At an interactive session with stakeholders at the Lagos Zonal Office of the Commission, Mr. Mago said actionable intelligence received from local and international law enforcement agencies had revealed that the suspects, alongside their collaborators, were a high-value target in organized cyber syndicate network. Mr. Mago, who also showed journalists several recovered vehicles from cyber criminals, said the Commission is stepping up efforts at combating the rising tide of cyber crimes in the country. Here we don't, do not differentiate. Everybody who is here, they will enter the same cell. So we have no executive decision. But this time around, we are not going to tolerate the, the auction, the, the court auction kind of thing, where the grossly devalued. So at least we may give away at, at least 40%, and we'll do everything possible to know they are real value. We'll bring in professional, you know, and uh, professional in the field, and also professional. Uh, who are actually uh, in the business. And uh, we'll go back to the court and we'll agree on a reasonable price so, so that they will, they, will, they will want us to recover a reasonable amount since it is a, it's a budget line. And we round off with the report that the Cross River State Governor, Ben Ayade, has inaugurated four members of the State Judicial Service Commission, and they include retired Justice Obodja Oga, Ntufam Joe Ebam, Dr. Teresa Ikwen, and Barisa Tessan Etum Okune. Apart from the four members, other members of the Judicial Service Commission are the Chief Judge of the State, who is the Automatic Chairman of the Commission, and the Attorney General of the State, who is equally an automatic member of the Revered Commission. The State Government says the members were selected based on their past track records. The members have been charged to be forthright in their conduct. You've all been chosen very carefully based on your track records and your performances in the state and everywhere in the nation. The services you have done, you are just being called to continue with that kind of service. It's a specialized service in this case mainly to the judiciary of the state where just you are what the Civil Service Commission is to the Civil Service and what also the Local Government Service Commission is to the local government. Um, so that your functions are well, are well spelled out in the 
Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Some lawyers have been reacting to the Supreme Court judgment on the presidential election appeal. Some of them spoke to Law Weekly. Typical of me, my reaction to that judgment will not be different from the reaction of the Supreme Court itself. Number one, we should not make mistake about it. The Supreme Court is the apex court of the land. Without being immodest, I can say authoritatively that appeal lies from Supreme Court to heaven. That judgment was delivered on the basis, in summary, that the petition of Elijah Baka Atiku of PDP is unmeritorious and is hereby dismissed. Reasons for not being meritorious to be given later. It is therefore premature, if you ask me, for any lawyer, whether a professor or a son or a gun or whatever, of whatever description, to want to begin to analyze a judgment whose reasons have not been adduced by the apex court of the land. And even if reasons are adduced, that is the end of litigation in Nigeria. And to that extent, they are invaluable. All the political class can do now is to go and prepare for another election in four years' time. Elections were fought. A winner emerged in the presidential election. There was a party who was not happy with the results. I took it up to the apex court. The apex court is the last court in the federation. When he speaks, you cannot say anything or do anything about it again. I would rather encourage the winner of this election, the president who has always been the winner, the APS has only confirmed the position that it should be magnanimous in victory. And that also goes to the members of the ruling party, the APC. There should be no snary or laughing at the losing side. This is one country. Even though at Elijah Atiku Abubakar has lost the election, I must commend his boldness decision to take the matter up to the apex court. The petition of Atiku and PDP failed the very day the president refused to assent to the electoral uh, bill to make electronic voting and electronic collation of results and electronic transfer of results to make it law. That was the day this case was lost. Another day that this case was lost was the day Buhari tyrannically removed the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Onoge, as CJN of Nigeria. The third day this case was lost was the day the court I mean, the presidential elect election trouble at the Court of Appeal level, the day they refused to allow PDP access to the voting materials. Those were the days this judgment, and I mean, this case was lost. So I wasn't expecting anything different. And that's our program this week. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to catch the repeat on air or watch via our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shieli. See you next week. <music>